Hi, this is Toby from Cuddle, and this video is an introduction to using parameters in your Cuddle projects. So parameters are uh, these convenient things that let you change uh, aspects of your design, and as you change the parameters, your design changes. So uh, in this case, we're going to be making a parametric angle gauge. Uh, here are two examples of the finished result. And you could use these angle gauges for setting up tools or as templates. So I'm going to start with a fresh uh, blank design. And first I'm going to show how to make sort of that basic shape without using any parameters. So to do that, I'm going to um, show you some a trick. So for anything that's sort of stick-like, um, I'll sometimes make a path like I did here and then um, select the path and then I, I want to give it thickness. So um, what I'm going to do is a cool trick where I'm going to turn off the hairline stroke and use the stroke settings to get it to look like I want. So I'm increasing the stroke width, uh, changing the cap to round so that I've got these round uh, corners at the end. And then because I want to cut out this shape, what I need to do is use modify boolean flatten and then I'll check this stroke result. And so this will give me now the cut path to cut out the um, the shape with these stroke settings on it. Um, so this is just like a really handy trick to get a cut path for a stick-like shape that has um, some thickness to it. All right, so that's sort of my my basic shape. And uh, next I'm going to add some parameters. So um, the most important thing to parameterize for this is the angle. Um, so there, there are two places that I can add a parameter. I can either add it to the project or to the component. Um, I'm going to talk more about what the difference is at the end of this video. For now, I'm going to add it to the component. Um, and I'm going to call it angle, and I'll say, oh, I want like a 120 degree angle. So now, how do I use this so that if I change this, the, the geometry changes? So what I'm going to do is, um, what, I, what I want to happen is I want this anchor point to sort of rotate around uh, the... Um, based on the angle. So um, to edit the anchor points of a path, I can double click it and then I can click on any of the anchors and see their coordinates here. Um, I'm going to sort of standardize this. So let's say that our thing is going to be three inches long that way and then three inches long this way. To, um, to make the shape um, I'm going to type in another expression in here. I'm going to say um, that there's going to be a vec that's 3, 0, and then I'm going to rotate it by some number of degrees, which I can then change. So um, the expressions that you can write in here, um, if you go to the Learn Cuddle page, there's reference documentation for all of the math expressions that you can write in here. And those include things like your basic arithmetic, adding, multiplying, um, and also a few um, operations that you can do on these uh, vec objects, these vector objects, which sort of a vector represents a, a sort of a, a point or a, a two-dimensional uh, object. So um, where this, whereas you know, a number just just one-dimensional vec has an x and a y component. So anyway, you can you can read more about the different um, sort of operations you can put in these fields. So anyway, I have it now so that I have this um, vec at three zero, which is here, and then that rotates around, and I can change this rotation value. Uh, 
and you see this goes around and then I want to hook that up to the angle com uh, parameter that I made so I'll type in angle here and now I can change this angle up here um, and then this expression will update because uh, it's using the angle parameter. Um, so that's sort of the basics of how you would set up a parameter. Um, you can then, um, you know, if you wanted to have more parameters, you could. You don't have to. Like a really great thing about Cuddle is that you can only you can add parameters gradually as you need them. So um, you know, this is probably enough for our purposes. But you know, if I wanted to be able to parameterize the the size of these legs, then I could add like a leg size parameter, and I can say that should be like four, and then I can use leg size here and here, and then as I change leg size, um, these these guys both sort of expand out. Um, another trick, if you change the precision, if I add a point zero, then my my scrubbing goes uh, by 0.1 increments. Um, so, you know, if I added another zero there, it'd be even finer tuning. So just a little trick. Um, and then I'm also going to add a thickness of this thing. So it'll be, let's say, one inch. And then here, I want this thickness to control the stroke width. So I'm going to put that in there. And then as I change thickness, the stroke width changes. OK. And then finally, I wanted to add a um, text that will say what the angle is so that my angle gauges are labeled. So I'm going to drag uh, text out. And I'm going to change the font to be one of our stroke fonts. Um, so in the stroke sans, I like to use this EMS readability font. And uh, stroke fonts are nice because they're just a single stroke. So if you have, if you set, say, your laser cutter on the score setting, then it's really quick to for the laser to just trace out these letters. Um, and now for the text, I want the text to be the angle. Um, but if I were to just type in angle here, it says, oh, you just want the word angle. That's not what I want. I want um, this expression. So what you'll need to do for text is if you click on this dot, dot, dot menu and go to edit expression, now I'm editing this as a an expression. And so here I can then type in angle and then it will reference this number and change it. Um, then if I want to put a little degrees symbol on there, um, so in this expression, uh, you would say, like, um, this plus refers to string concatenation. So it'll be this string and then followed by this string. Um, and I want the degree symbol so uh, I can look that up and uh, so I just um, on Mac you can do command control space and it'll pop up like a character searcher or you could Google for degree symbol and copy and paste the degree symbol in there. All right, so I have that um, and then I want this to be like centered here. Um, but to do that, I I'm going to use these settings. So I'm going to set the vertical align to be middle so that it is always sort of in the right place. Um, so now as I change the angle, the text changes too. Um, I want this the text to scale with the thickness. So I'm just going to change the size to be, and I think this is a little bit too big. So I'm going to say 0 0.7 times the thickness. So then as the thickness changes, the text sort of scales up and is always uh, sort of readable there. Um, all right, so that's getting text in there. Um, I'll also probably want to change the stroke 
color of the text so that I can tell my laser cutter, oh, I want to cut out this outline, but then I want to um, score the, the text. So uh, yeah, so that's parameterizing this component. And now um, I promised that I would tell you more about what's the difference between adding a parameter on the project versus on the component. So the difference is that since I added these parameters on the component, if I make a new component, it no longer has access to the parameters that I put on component A. So component B no longer has access to those from component A. Um, whereas if I put something on the project, so these, these will be project wide. So I'll, I'll often say like my material thickness, um, I want to be able to access that everywhere. So I'll put that on my project, and then component B can still access the material thickness. Um, so generally, um, you know, things that are project wide, I'll I'll put up here. Um, if you're making something that has multiple pieces, you probably will be putting some dimensions up in the project so that you can reference them from different pieces. If you're using your components as different pieces. Um, and then I wanted to show one final thing. One advantage of putting parameters on the component is that then if you have multiple instances of that component, you can change the parameters for each instance. So I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by that. So I have this component B, and I might drag out um, several instances of my component A like that. And now on each one of these, I can change the individual uh, parameters on them. So here are three instances of this component A, but each one has a different value for the angle parameter. And I can do that because these parameters are on the component. And by default, they're going to take the values from component A, and the default is indicated by this gray background, and then the green background indicates that you've, you've changed it, so you've overridden the default. If I want to go back to the default, I can go revert to default value, and then this turns gray, and then it takes on the default value, which in this case is 134. If I were to go back to component A and change the default, so this represents the default, then over here you'll notice that this guy changed um, you know, its angle because it, it just wants to be the default. Um, so for example, all of these have the same default thickness. So if I went and changed the default thickness to make it really small, then all of these will change because they're just taking the default value. And of course, I could go in and be like, I want this one to be different values. So you do that, it turns green. Um, I hope that's clear about how the component parameters work. Um, so yeah, that is a quick introduction to how parameters work in Cuddle. I hope it's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.